How you doing? My name is Glenn. I am with V Power Equipment. Today we are going to do a video on converting a Predator 212 into a multi-fuel engine. Uh, basically, when we're done, this thing will be able to run on gasoline, natural gas, or liquid propane. Now we're doing a Predator, but this can also be done on many other engines. I intend um, a lot of the Honda GX series, basically any of the engines in that seven horse range uh that use this type of a carburetor so basically we'll start off with what the kit comes with now this is an lpg kit we sell two kits we have one that's natural gas and if you were to buy the natural gas kit you would get the carburetor and the gaskets and that would be it because you need to pipe your own natural gas up to the carburetor um, i can tell you there's a 3 8 bob at the bottom of the carburetor if you're going to run natural gas you are more than likely going to need to run a much bigger pipe than that depends on how long the run is you would have to contact a local plumber or something to find out exactly uh, what you would need to do because there's a lot of variables in that but on the lpg kit it basically comes with the hose <clears throat> and the regulator the regulator is a special regulator for an engine. It allows more flow than the ones used by at Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, they generally will not allow, allow enough flow for an engine to run. So that is basically the kit. And now we will go ahead and do the install. Give me a minute here to get my camera set up. And I'll try right there. Okay, let me just get this. Okay, so here we go really not a very hard process we are basically going to start off with well actually we're going to start off with this we're going to remove we're going to unbend this little tab that holds this wire to the gas tank we're going to bend that back and there's a little hose that goes in the valve cover right about here we're going to pop that out okay then we're going to turn the engine back we're going to remove the air box take off this screw take off this screw pull the air box off then we will be able to take the air box and set it up over the back of the engine. Push that out of our way. Okay, now we need to undo the fuel line from this carburetor. We're gonna slip the clamp up. Then we're gonna reach in here and just kind of push the fuel line off. Then we are gonna pull the carburetor back. Remove that gasket, pull the carburetor back. Once it's pulled back a bit, you can pull that rod right out of it. The spring is notched into a little hole. You can take that right out of it. And that's it, the carburetor comes off. You're going to want to make sure that this surface is clean of gaskets. This is a brand new engine, and so the gasket just came right off for the carburetor. If your engine's been used, there's likely that'll have to be cleaned up a little bit. Uh, try not to remove this plate if you can help it though, because the gasket between it and the engine does not come with the kit. And I believe the only way we have that is in a complete gasket set. So anyways, now we are going to reinstall the multi-fuel carburetor. And let me show you a couple things on this carburetor. Basically, it has this knob here, which is now facing to LPG, which is where we want it. But if we were going to run on natural gas, the arrow is facing LPG. We would just pull the knob out and rotate it to the other side. Now the arrow is facing down, and they call it CNG, and that is basically natural gas. So we will put this back. This is a primer. When you have it all hooked up, you push this a little bit. It'll bleed some of the air out of the lines. Also, give it just a little bit of gas. You don't want to hold it too long because it is pouring gas when you push it in, pouring you know LPG or natural gas, whatever it is you have there. But you can push it in for a second or two, give it a little prime, help get the engine started, um, and uh, like I say, sometimes purge the air out of the lines. So we're going to start off by installing our gasket right there. Then we are going to install the carburetor. We're going to get it again about halfway down. We're going to take that rod. Sometimes you have to kind of twist this rod a little bit to get it in. There we go. And then we are going to rehook this spring back up. A little hole. There we go. We're going to slide it back a little more. We're going to push the fuel line back on. And we're going to pull the little hose clamp back down. There we go. And on this particular engine, it has one of these a fatter gasket spacer. Um, the kit comes with a, with a regular paper gasket. You can use either one, but if the if you have the fatter spacer and it's in good condition, like obviously this one is because it's a new engine, you you probably be better off to use that spacer. But either way, will work. So we're going to put that on there. So now our carburetor is installed. 
we are going to move the airbox back over the top push the that little hose that we had to disconnect from the valve cover we're going to just kind of set it under the right over the spark plug wire and then kind of under the other side of it sometimes it's easy to pull the boot off the spark plug wire we're going to push that back into the valve cover like that put the spark plug boot back on then we are going to reinstall these bolts other one okay that's it carburetor is installed linkage is hooked up everything else on this carburetor will work exactly like it did before you still use the choke exactly like you did before fuel shutoff valve you're basically only going to use it if you're going to run on gasoline if you're going to be running on uh, liquid propane say you would shut your fuel valve off turn your liquid propane on and then start it under the liquid propane. Uh, do be aware that both liquid propane and natural gas don't have quite the volatility of gasoline and so it will start a little bit hotter on either one of those products. Um, that is just kind of the nature of the beast. The rest of this is pretty simple. You take this hose, push it onto the bottom of the carburetor. And by the way, the, the threaded part of this carburetor will come out if you need to thread into it for natural gas. I know some areas require that you have a hard connection there. Um, that can be done. And let's see, we're just going to take this clamp, slide it up, tighten it down. There we go. Complete it. This engine is now ready. This will thread onto a 30, uh, I think a 20, 30, and 40 pound tank, if I remember correctly. They all use the external threads. Um, if you're going to run on a bigger tank, something like 100 pounds, you want to buy a natural gas kit because this regulator won't do you any good because they have an internal thread and this will not connect to it. So at that point, you would want to buy the regular natural gas kit, save the money from buying the regulator, and you need to buy a regular commercial regulator, like something that, that you would use to run your house because um, that will not allow enough flow. Like I say, the, the ones that of uh, Home Depot generally will not, but a regular commercial grade one definitely will. So there we are. There's our finished product. We thank you for watching. These are available at vpowerequipment.com. Thank you.